The year is 1994, folks, when Hollywood was at its creative best, in my opinion, and we had amazing gems of action films like The Crow, uh, which obviously has a bit of a connection here with Ernie Hudson, uh, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. But today we are talking about No Escape, not No Surrender, because that's a completely different film with Jean-Claude Van Damme. So without further ado, folks, get your popcorn out, get that big glug glass of Coca-Cola, sit down and let's reminisce about a time when movies were movies and not agenda filled bullshit that we get today. Excellent. Now it comes as no surprise folks that Marvel and Disney have a stranglehold on Hollywood right now with their garbage tier superhero movies and here we are going back to 1994 uh, and uh, just reminiscing about a movie that I have not seen since that time. In fact, I had no recollection of this movie. And it was only this morning that my copy that arrived yesterday, I thought I'll pop into my DVD player and watch it just to see what the fuss is about. Honestly, you cannot go wrong with owning a copy of this. I would say just get the US version because it's fully uncut. Amazingly, in Europe and in the UK, one second is trimmed from this film. It's very obvious when you get to the climax of the movie what that actual one second is. I will not say anything. I will not spoil anything because you have to watch this film to see it and believe it for yourself. Now, one thing I have to be thoroughly ashamed of myself and spank myself on the hands because if I did any other kind of spanking that would be um, demonetized straight away <laughs> but this film is directed by Martin Campbell the same Martin Campbell behind Edge of Darkness for the BBC and also two years later Mr. Campbell would give us the quintessential James Bond film they called Goldeneye you know his name you know his number it's Pierce Brosnan but here two years before Martin Campbell was just uh, honing in in these action shops and he decided to take the cast and crew to New South Wales, Australia. If you're going to be watching a generic action film, you know it's going to be shot in a cheap location, maybe Canada, maybe some indoorsy renter studio in Los Angeles or Las Vegas, whatever. But here, no, Martin Campbell flies the whole cast and crew to Australia. What a great move. Now, this film, when it begins, I'm not going to go too much into the plot. Ray Liotta, who just played Henry Hill in Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas, finds himself in the lead role as an action hero called J.T. Robbins. Now, Ray Liotta, you wouldn't associate with being a leading action man, but I'll tell you what, the guy does bring his dramatic chops here. He's really fantastic. He's a badass, and we notice from the first 20 minutes of the film when we see him, when he's confronted by the Warden, played by Michael J. Lerner. You know that huge guy, he's got the intimidating physical and verbal presence about him, but he's actually a beta male in this film. As soon as the film begins, you kind of get an idea where this character's coming from. He's very intimidating. He appears as a hologram at first because obviously, he's not a big fan of a physical contact, if you get my drift. I run a multinational business here, Mr. Robbins. Basically, I take human garbage from around the world and I reprocess it. I'm very good at this business. But then something happens where we find our hero played by Liotta on an island run by the Outsiders. And who's the leader of the Outsiders? It is, of course, Stuart Wilson as Walter Merrick. This guy is absolutely hysterical. He is one of the most unsung screen baddies I have seen. I mean, it was a delight for me to sit down today and just laugh at his antics. I was seeing Negan in The Walking Dead is a ripoff of this character. I would definitely say that because the way Stuart Wilson walks and talks and the despicable acts he commits on the screen, I thought this is the Negan character from The Walking Dead. That's who he is. I could use a man like you. A position on my staff, perhaps. We appear to have an opening. <laughs> but Stuart Wilson has a ton of fun. And of course, the appearance of him, I'm talking about his physical appearance with the dreadlocks, would probably send some woke Twitter idiots into a frenzy today, like Kathia Woods. You better hide that big ass forehead. <laughs> what would she say if she watched this film? She would say, 
Oh, Stuart Wilson. He's so culturally inappropriate with that hair. I've always wanted to read this. Basket weaving, the creative choice. But nobody cared back then, nobody should care now. It's a great film of its time. It needs to be preserved along with T2 in the Smithsonian. Now, for circumstances that I won't get into, Robbins finds himself uh, on the island with the insiders, the island of Absalom, which is where that DVD title, that Blu-ray title comes into hand, where it's not just no escape, it's uh, no escape from Absalom. So that's the reason why you might see two variant titles. And there he meets the father, played by Lance Henriksen. I mean, who else could play the father but Lance Henriksen? And his co-pilot is Ernie Hudson as Hawkins. Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson, now whenever you see this guy pop up in a 90s film, it's not about virtue signaling. He's a great character, he's a great supporting actor, he's amazing. There's a sort of a mutual respect, but then there's also this message of uh, that you have to earn your place somewhere before you just jump in and think you can take over the whole proceedings. Sounds familiar? We even have a Christmas section on the island. We get to hear Casey and the Sunshine Band, Dusty Springfield. So there's not this completely remote cut off from the outside world. We're still pretty much aware that it's 2022. Although from Hawkins, we do find out they've been on the island. This island of men have been on the island since 2009 and they're just looking to get at, back out into civilization. And I can kind of understand that, but once I've seen this island, I don't think I'd actually want to come back to civilization, especially if you know that the grass is not green on the other side. I'm talking about woke AI. Yes, this is a real thing, folks, apparently. The American government today are slowly infiltrating woke AI so you don't say anything bad on social media or YouTube. You have to be one of the good guys or the good girls. Basket weaving, the creative choice. So I wonder how long that's going to last for before a revolution rises and tries to take over everything. So yeah, maybe that's that message in <laughs> No Escape, a bit misguided I think, but back in, back in those days, nobody knew 2022 and beyond was gonna be an absolute shit show. Now a father and son bonding relationship I had with my dad, which I enjoyed for the most part, was watching a good action movie with him, or even with my granddad actually. You've got the badass antagonist, you've got the badass protagonist, you want these two to log heads together, and you just want to see what the final outcome is going to be. And usually the good guy gets his ass kicked in the second act of the film or the first act. And by the, th and by the third act, you want to see justice rise and prevail. And I've got to point out one thing about the cast here. They're all men. No insufferable women in the cast whatsoever. There was mention of one woman and that kind of gets a resolution at the end. But Gail and Hurd... Yep, she of The Walking Dead and ex-partner James Cameron is a producer on this film. And boy, oh boy, does she do a sterling job because she gets uh, testosterone, she gets the, uh, <laughs> the men showboating their prowess, either physical, verbal or mental. You know where I'm coming from? And the action is fantastic in this film, it's brutal. It's exactly what you expect to see from a film of its time. And that's what I'm talking about, folks. Buy this movie on Blu-ray. It's had a long delayed release until a few years ago. It's now on Blu-ray. Get that on your bookshelf. Get it on your mantelpiece. Don't let it gather dust because if there's one thing that life experience has told me about my hobby of movie watching and buying video games, buy the stuff you're gonna get repeat enjoyment from. If you're buying it for the sake of it and it's gathering dust, get rid of it, resell it, do whatever. Use it as a coaster for your coffee mug. And at the end of the day, folks, the reason why I want to own this film on Blu-ray, I know the minute it arrives in the post, I'm gonna watch it again and again after that. It's a perfect summer movie. It's the perfect movie that when it's raining outside and you wanna stay in bed all day and you just wanna watch some good action movies on loop, definitely get Point Break, absolutely get No Escape and T2. Maybe the three granddaddies of action movies of the 90s that you can stick in and maybe even blade as a tail off if you want that but honestly you know what when i watched this film 
I kept imagining Stuart Wilson as Hans Gruber in Die Hard. Can you imagine what that film would be like with his presence in it? I'm not taking anything away from Anna Rickman, who did a sterling job, but honestly, when I look at Stuart Wilson, like why wasn't this guy playing more ruthless bad guys in the 90s? Yes, he was in Lethal Weapon 3 and he was poorly utilized in that movie. Like they didn't know how to write a script for that character because if they made him a really worthwhile protagonist for Riggs and Murtaugh, he would have been another memorable turn for that film. But Lethal Weapon 3, not a very good film in my opinion anyway. But Stuart Wilson is just... Yeah, imagine he could have been a diehard villain. He could have been in Die Hard 3 and I think he would have brought some real gravitas to it. I need to go and watch this guy's uh, films a bit more. See what else I've missed out on. But honestly, Walter Merrick might be my favourite baddie of all time on the big screen and on one last columbo like note folks if blockbuster video were to reopen today and you walked into your favorite rental store nobody has the movie i want and you saw this based dvd blu-ray cover sat there on the shelves and then you turn to your right and you saw the eternals or thor love and bunder what do you think would persuade you more to pick up a copy of no escape what would be the you know because it's an understated cover it's a based cover it's just badass all over and where the other covers are just trying their hardest to get your attention do you see where i'm going with this so who knows i'd like to see a blockbuster video store reopen around my way around the whole of the uk in america it may happen blockbuster video could have been netflix but they said online streaming services that ain't ever gonna happen oh boy the uh the uh <laughs> the fortitude of foresight right yeah well there you go and on that one folks if you enjoyed this retro film review today make sure you like the like button make sure you subscribe to that subscribe button and if i were you and if you were me you better join these guys for the next video review that I upload. I've never seen 10,000 tapes in one store. There's so much kid stuff. And I can keep them for three evenings. Now this is a video store. Ordinary video stores don't even come close to Blockbuster Video. You've just got to see it to know what we mean. Wow. 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 What a difference. Blockbuster Video. Come discover the blockbuster difference. Wow.